in various ways. He would shoot some. He would use hammers to bludgeon them to death. The young woman in Oregon, he buried her alive, so he used every diabolical method to kill his victims. College sweethearts Mary Beth and Craig would be Gerald and Charlene's final victims, as their abduction led to their arrest. Charlene's information on the total of 10 murders would provide the prosecution with powerful evidence against Gerald. But the consequences of their deal with the devil would leave the public and victims' families outraged. In 1982, Charlene Gallego had turned on her husband and admitted not only to her involvement in the kidnap, rape and murder of Sacramento students Mary Beth Sowers and Craig Miller, but to the murder of eight other girls and women in California, Oregon and Nevada. The objective of the prosecution uh, in both Pershing County through Richard Wagner in Sacramento County through uh, Jim Morris was to uh, put Gerald on death row and have him executed. That was the, the goal. My intentions as a prosecutor was to see that he was executed for his crimes. I made no secret about that. There is no amount of time that he could do in jail for what he did to all of these young girls and these families. Charlene's testimony allowed the prosecution to secure the sentence they desired. The death penalty was imposed. Couldn't happen to a better person. In return for her testimony and for her part in the abduction, rape and murder of 10 people, Charlene was shown leniency. She was a very excellent witness and did her job in court telling the truth. And so I, I have no regrets about having entered into that bargain. It's like making a deal with the devil, because we know that she enticed at least six of the victims to their death. But at the same time, to try to get Gerald on a death sentence, we all made the decision that that was worth it. Charlene was sentenced to 16 years and eight months. And in 1997, aged just 41, she walked to freedom. That to me was a slap in the face. How do you put 16 years, eight months on somebody's life? Well, she definitely got away with murder. I thought she should have been right along with him. The question over the true extent of Charlene's role in the murders would never be answered. What was certain is that together, Gerald and Charlene were a lethal combination. But did their motivation to commit these monstrous acts lay in their upbringing, or were they born killers? Gerald was not necessarily born to kill, but he was certainly vulnerable to it from a very early age. He had serious disadvantage growing up and then turned and twisted that into a murderous personality. Coming into the world as he did and the family came into, I don't think there's any question but that at some point, someone was going to die because of him. His father was convicted for murder. Uh, he had a very, very difficult childhood. Now that's not an excuse or an explanation, but it certainly doesn't help in the development or molding of a serial sexual murderer. Um, the amount of anger and aggression and hatred uh, in inside uh, Gallego was just enormous. I believe that Charlene, had she met the right guy instead of hooking up with this character, we never would have even known who she was. Well, I don't think Charlene was a born killer at all. Um, I think Charlene got involved in this through her association with Gerald. Uh, Gallego, on the other hand, certainly had a deviant sexual arousal pattern. But I think Gerald would have killed. Uh, Charlene, no, but Gerald, absolutely.
Gerald would eventually die of natural causes before his execution, but not before the bodies of Brenda Judd and Sandra Colley were finally discovered. Nearly 21 years after Charlene and Gerald had abducted them from the fair in Reno. It was such a bittersweet thing because it was 20 years, 11 months, and three days from the day they were kidnapped till we got to take her home for burial. Yeah, I was really pleased, though, when I was told that they had been found. And in fact, I got a call from one of the girl's mothers, and she said, thank you. And I says, why are you thanking me? I says, I didn't find your girls. So it's a, you know, it's a tough situation. She's still terribly missed. It's been 35 years, but you can take it one day at a time or one minute at a time, but you have to go on. That emptiness in my heart will never go away. Charlene continues to enjoy her freedom to this day, but the legacy of her and Gerald's killing spree lives on with the families that have been left behind. There was never any relief or anything like that, none of that. Closure, whatever you'd call it. Hmm. I think about it every day. <laughs>